Welcome back to Faith, Family, and Finance. Uh, I'm your host, Stacia, and I'm joined by my wonderful husband, George. I was supposed to kick in there. Say hi. Hi, yeah. how you doing? <laughs> I want to make sure I can talk. I got to ask these days. So it's been, we know that it's been a minute. Um, had to get situated. Well, I guess summer's coming up, kids getting out of school and everything. Uh, yeah. But we're back. we're back. So if you haven't already, be sure to like, hit the like and subscribe button. Like, we'll subscribe, be... follow all that, all that stuff behind there. Like Beaumont Jones said, if you don't, mm. you are a hater. One day, one day he's going to come after you for taking his line. Mm -hmm. One day. One day he will. Yes. Not today, though. Let's go. So, what's been going on? Not a whole lot. Right now, I feel like there's a lot of soccer. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, yeah. Our son plays soccer. soccer. And for those parents whose kids who have kids in sports, I promise you, it's almost like yeah, you have to give up your life. Oh, they have no respect anymore. No, whatsoever. None at all. Practice every day, yeah. games every weekend. It's like, yeah. And then I'm, they want to do summertime ball too. Oh, let me tell you how my parents got down. So from the I started this sports journey at five and it was baseball. And it was only in the summertime. Like, there was no taking you to practice two, three times a week. The older I got, it was like you got the limit of one, maybe two, right? Yeah. There wasn't like, we're going to do this every weekend. Hey, these yeah. sports today take up the whole weekend, at least three nights of practice, and it's like, this is what it is. And you got to pay a lot of money for it, too. It ain't cheap. I, I yeah, It's not I mean, cheap. without, I mean, honestly, truly, without there being two working parents in the house, I, I don't even know. I don't even know how single parents do it. You know, the crazy part about it is anywhere else in the world, right? Mm -hmm. The Those kids go through those those clubs and those programs and they're free for them. Mm -hmm. That's how they're able to find the, the best talent, right? Yeah. But you look here in America, as much as it costs, I don't even know if all the best talent can even sign up to play in today's uh, youth sports, right? Um, I, I would say... I. I would agree. They're probably not. Yeah. Because again, it costs, and it's all about exposure. You got to pay to play, yeah. basically. Pay play. And not uh, only that, but at this age, at at five, kids have personal trainers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just very expensive. Which, speaking of, um, there was a clip recently, uh -huh. and it talked about there was a young man on there that was talking about providers what it means to have a provider in the house. And I guess there's this term, sprinkle, sprinkle um, generation. And Explain it to me. Because I think I got the clip pulled up here. Explain well, it to let's, me. The let's clip. watch the clip. Okay. Let's yeah, watch let's it. watch the clip. Sometimes come off as moochers and opportunists, very much 
she had been kept men, but keep in mind, not every woman subscribes to the whole scribble scribble mindset. Let me know what y'all think about the situation down below. Do you believe that people are unfairly projecting their own insecurities and standards onto a relationship that they are not in? Or do you believe that the spouse of a beauty influencer should be seen and not heard? Mm. Interesting. Very, 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 very interesting. Um, I guess for me, that's actually interesting to hear a man um, state that he's not willing to follow the traditional belief that the man should be the provider of the household. Um, so it is given a little bit kept, but I didn't disagree with everything that he said um, because I, I think that – so. <laughs> what I do every single day as a wealth advisor for women is I teach women the importance of having their own financial independence. Even if you're married, doesn't matter. Um, you should be able to stand on your own, you know, your own two feet um, financially. So I, I agree with some of what he said, but on the back end, I was given a little bit that he, he's kept. And, and all, right. all right, so... I think we were like 12. I was 13. Dorothy was 12 years old. And my, my over in Kansas City, Kansas, my, you know, on the Missouri side, and, and you see the houses, the porches were on the front. Um, where my grandparents lived out in Kansas City, Kansas, and Brentwood, the, house, the porches were on the back. So one day we were out on the back porch, um, and they had an apple tree. And me and Dorothy was back in the back playing with some apples. At that point in time, my, my mother's father had started having some health issues, and he used to have this guy used to pick, pick him up every day. He had a driver, right? Pick mm -hmm. him up, drop him off. Um, so one day, um, we're on the back early in the, earlier in the morning. The driver shows up. Um, I can't forget his name, but please forgive me. But he comes out to the back, um, wishing out there playing around, and he says, listen, I need y'all to understand something. He said that y'all going to get some girlfriends one day. And he said, the, the little stuff, like getting their hair and nails done, he said, that's cheap. He said, if that's all you have to do is pay to get their hair and nails done, you jump on it. Don't be one of them dudes that be like, I ain't paying to get no hair and nails done, because it's like, it's like 25 bucks. That's what he said, though, right? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Inflation, sir. And, and we kind of rocked with that, right? I mean, we, we 12, 13 years old. We out back. He's telling us that we don't know nothing about going to chase no girls at the time. But as we got older... I realized that, like, all right, I understood what he was saying. I don't know if I necessarily agree with it, but I understood with it, right? Because it's going to be a cost one way or the other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it, a relationship is costful, right? Yeah. And so I grew up in a in an environment where the man paid for everything. It's what it was, right? Mm -hmm. um, I watched my two grandfathers take care of my grandmother's. They didn't work in the sense of really working. They took care of that family in the house. Was what I saw at that point in time growing up. Uh, my father stepped into that same kind of role. My mother worked, but he was the provider, took care of everything. Um, when I started dating, my father was always like, "You pick, you pay. If you can't take her out, if you ain't got no money, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what his thing was. If you ain't got no money, how are you gonna take somebody out, mm -hmm. right? Because you're supposed to pay for it, right? So understanding that." Um, that's how I was raised. My belief is going to be that when I teach my sons, it's going to be, if you go on the date, you pay for the date, or you can't go on the date, right? Is that why I had to pull my debit card out last night on our date? I mean, we different now. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's your money is my money. We work together. Like, this is our money. That's crazy. You know I mean? flip to what's your money. <laughs> it is. I mean. I'm just I, kidding. It is. Um, but, which but, our finances are together. So, yes, yeah. I'm joking. Um, yeah. But I, 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 I agree with, I, I, I don't agree with what he said um, and maybe splitting the bill. I may feel like in the dating space that there is a way that a man is supposed to, if he's courting a woman, that he's supposed to pay for that. I'm not teaching my daughters to go out there and split no dates with no dudes. You know, here's what I say. I'm I, teaching my daughter to go out there. I'm not saying every day. <laughs> maybe not the first couple ones, but if we're dating, and you're like, we're, say you're dating someone for a year. That's different. That's You're in a relationship. I'm talking, like in the courting space, yeah. When you're in a relationship, like if you're building a relationship towards. I um, actually, no, I think in the beginning. Like, so I would teach our daughters to always be prepared to pay your own. Because here's the thing. What if you go on a date with a guy, you don't like the guy, 
And like, so you don't want, I mean, the minute he pays. He asked it, you for a day, he's still supposed to pay. No, if, even if you but the minute. It, so today, in today's generation, like, it, it's like them paying for a date means, okay, I did this for you. You owe me something. That's like a common belief amongst the generations today. So for our daughters, you always got to have like your debit card right there on your hip, ready that in the case that you don't see this going anywhere, you don't like, you have no intention on pursuing or even talking to this person. When y'all get up from this table, you pay for your own. See, that's the, I, I my oldest child lives by that right there she believes that and she believes and she that should. I, I but she, but she's paid for more half than she probably should have because i don't believe that my daughter should pay for anything i believe that if you go out and if, if i ask you as a man to go on a date with me i'm supposed to pay for it until we get to a space that we're talking about building a life together if we're if we're dating nope. I, I now there gets to a point that i sometimes it's okay to be like i got this one yeah you're supposed to sometime right but just un understand that like I don't want my daughter dating a guy who just believes that every day should be 50 50. I, I, I'm not saying that every day should be 50 50, but I'm saying like, so we don't have control over like the guys that our daughters date per se. We don't have any control over how they were raised. We don't even know what that's going to look like until we get introduced to them and we ask some questions, yeah. but we do have full control over our daughters, how our daughters show up prepared. And for me, I've seen too many women who have had that mindset of let the man pay for everything or like you spend your check or you don't save, you do whatever you want to do. He pays for everything. And then they look up, something happens, something goes left and they are left trying to pick up the pieces, trying to figure it out because it's too late now. So I want to teach our daughters that number one, you should always have your own on the side. And I also want to teach them. <laughs> and I'm saying, but even I think how they we should have their own. No, I, they I, should I have that. They should because you you just don't know. Nothing is guaranteed. And I just would rather them be prepared, show up with that mindset, than the mindset of, oh, okay, the waiter comes to the table. Who's pulling out their debit card first? No, like, is, do I need to? And show him like, because that to me that establishes that ground of that plants the seed of. If I need to hold my own, then I can hold my own. And furthermore, I don't need you, sir. You are here because I want you in this space, but I don't need you. Exactly. I, I heard I, Stacey I, say, I, exactly. I, 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 I just believe. I agree with, with, so I've been in situations where it was like, I want to date. She picked a place. It was expensive. Mm -hmm. We ordered food. We ordered drinks. I'm, I'm prepared to pay for this, but then the expectation I felt was I was supposed to pay for this. Yeah. So I paid for it, but I was just like, eh. and then I went on a date with a different girl and we went out to eat. I paid for it. And then after I paid for it, she was like, oh, we, when we can go get drinks, I'll get drinks. And I respect it. I, yeah. I, I respect that too. I, I'm, 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 so let me, let me say this the right way. I respect that. I, I respect that a lot. I also respect what you, I, I, that's what we teach our kids. I, I respect that too. But I don't want my daughter dating a guy that's not willing to pick up the bill. If he's not willing to pick up the bill, then I don't want, I, there's no sense in going forward because what he's telling you right now is this is what's always going to be. And, and there's going to be, and, and, and down the line, I think, and this is, as a man, I feel like, all right, let's, let's talk about a couple things here. One is women today are making more money, are making more money, right? So there's gonna be situations making where women more money than what men. Some some situations where they're making more money than Sir, men. Sir, no, 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 because statistically, women still earn less. Now there are uh, uh, some okay. occupations. I, I, I got you. I, I, yeah, I got you. no, but, women but, do but not they're, make they're more going, than They're men. going to a space where they're where they're gonna be situations in households where, where your wife's gonna make more money than you are. Yeah, yeah. That's just gonna happen, right? Yes. And, but, um, until I get to that space, mm -hmm. um, I still have to prove that I can almost take care of my family if we have a family. I think that if the ties change while you're married, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how I get my son ready to go into a relationship and, and 
him going into a relationship immediately thinking that everything's 50-50. It will be 50-50 when you get there, right? When you get to the relationship, the marriage, it will get there, right? But as a man, you have to be willing to understand that, like, if something happens, I got to be ready to take care of this. Mm-hmm. And that starts from the beginning. I, and I, yeah. But isn't that a vice versa? It is. Because what happens if something happens to you and because that's and that's the other part, too. To me, that's why people or couples fall apart financially, because it's all just placed on one person. That other person it's kind of like think about like a, a we both we, we all play sports. Right. So think about if the coach didn't like the other the players that sit the bench never came to practice. Patrick Mahomes. Right. When he showed up to the Chiefs, he was not the main show. He was not the main quarterback. But that didn't stop him from practicing on the back end so that when he got his chance or he got his opportunity, that he could step right in and do what needed to be done. The same should apply for to me, the same should apply in households that, okay, we have we gotta practice this equally because if something happens to you, even in our situation, if something happens to you when you if you get sick or if you can't make it to work in a period of time, you don't have that that in the back of your mind, like, oh my gosh, I gotta hurry up and get up, I gotta get better. You're not you don't have that stress because we have prepared each other, we have prepared Pair together for no matter what happens for us both to be able to step up to the plate. And that's the part that I agree with the young man that yes, both people should be willing and able to step up to the plate. Now, traditionally, to your point, it has been the man that has stepped up. But I just think that it's, I, I, I just think that kind of that just, I think I, for I, women's I, I, sake. I think that if, if we, if this is what we preach, right, mm-hmm. then we are made, then. All right, Gary, what you said was right. Stacy, what you're saying is right. Mm-hmm. But if but. we raise a gr- <laughs> but if we raise a group of men to think that that's what it is, then we're gonna raise a whole generation full of weak ass men. You can't control men. that. Excuse my language. We can control that though by what we teach them. It's already it's already bad enough that that we. All right. Because I'm not teaching my son to go out here and and basically spend all his money on some little girl because she want to go to expensive restaurants every single time they go out to eat. The conversation I have with my sons is if you can't, if you, two things. One, you he needs to pick where they going. If she don't agree with that, then they agree with in the budget, then you don't need to date her. The second thing is if you want to take, if you're going to ask her to go on a date, you got to be able to pay for it. And I believe that. I just I. I just believe it. Now, once I'm in a relationship for a year or two, I'm, not, I'm down the road, we're in a relationship, it's okay to talk about, all right, let's be real here. All right, we're going to go on dates and stuff. We're going to do all this. I, I don't know. I, I don't know how that So happens. let me ask you this. Because, because I, 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 because, it does but, 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 add but, 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 all right, all right. What saying in today's economy, like, we could go to, you can go to Chick Fil A and spend forty dollars. Yeah. No, sixty. I don't even. I ain't been Chick Fil A and spending sixty dollars. For the day. Yeah. So you might do that twice, or you might do that throughout the week. And now I'm, my pockets are getting tore up. You can afford it. Yep. Doesn't matter. You got the financial advisors. That's not financially <laughs> responsible. To keep but then, going. but then we need yeah. to talk about how we date because, like, I, 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 I. Because here's the other thing. Hold on. Before you go there, when you think, of, okay, so you said. In teaching our sons as far as like, okay, if you ask a woman on a date, you got to be prepared to basically foot the bill. Okay. What happens in, okay, they're, they ask for the date, so they're planning the date. I have heard in more on more than one occasion where the place wasn't good enough. So they were prepared for the place that they selected that they wanted to pick but what happens when a curveball is thrown and essentially like, oh, okay. It's like, well, you picked first. So this is like, this is my budget. I am setting the stage of, okay, we went to go eat here. So the next time she picks, the understanding is still that, oh, you're the man. You still got to pay. But she picks and it's a completely different, like it's a restaurant that's out of your league. Then what? You lose control. No, you don't lose control. I mean, because here's the thing. This is where the budget lies. She can't operate in the budget. Because here's the thing. You having that conversation the second day. Oh, listen. Remember when we went to Focal Day Child when we first started dating? <laughs> all right. So, all right. All right. No, 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 no. This is good. This is good. So, it's Mother's Day, right? We had just really started dating, dating. I'm like, let's go somewhere to eat. I, I let Stacy pick. She's like, Focal Day Child. Did I'm I like, pick it? You did pick it. 
Okay. You did. You did. And at this point in time, we dating and and I ain't got no money. Not like like we are it was an understanding that like it was a struggle going on, right? I mean not really no, a struggle. No, you had that understanding because I didn't know. She didn't know. You was dating. Uh, yeah, so 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 we at Fogo Day Child, I mean, we you get party in there, one. right? And and the la- the waiter comes in, they sit you down. I'm looking for a menu, right? I mean, like I, I, I'm like I'm like I'm looking for the menu. He didn't research. I didn't do the right eat. like Brazilian steakhouse on the plaza, but like no, it wasn't Capitol Grill or or uh, Roof Chris, so I wouldn't like. I mean, we like I can afford everything else. I should be able to, right? I mean, we're talking about fifteen. No, we're talking about sixteen, seventeen years ago, and so we go in. Looking for the menu. They sit us down. There's no menu. They start walking around with the meat, right? They ask you if you want something to drink. Would you like to drink? You know, I'm like, water? I mean, I don't even know what I'm in yet. And then she like, uh, she got, she ordered a drink, a real drink. And I'm like, and I still like, the drink menu came. It showed the price. It showed the drinks with no prices on the drinks neither. But there was no price to like how much this food was going to cost that y'all was walking around with, right? And I didn't want to ask See, that's different between me and you. I mean, it was all, it was early. It Even was it, it, it was before it was before we got married, right? And so, the lady comes over and she was like, "What kind of meat you want?" I'm like, so how does this work? She's like, "We're gonna walk around. You can just pull meat off. We'll bring you the sides. There's the bar right there. All that. All right." So we get to the end. They bring the receipt over, and the receipt was like 150 dollars. I had like 154 dollars in my bank account. <laughs> She didn't get no tip that night. She couldn't get no tip. And I can understand how they be like, how they be like, they look at this one time, they be like, I don't want to wait them. They ain't going to tip. Now, that night, she did not get a tip. I didn't. I look, I'm, I'm thinking once it going around in the menu, I'm thinking, like, all right, we're going to be here for $89. But that's, you set yourself up for failure because, number one, you didn't research. Like, so if I, to me, like, let's talk about like, Can you experience. imagine what would have happened if I was like, hey, listen, I got then half you this bill. from somebody. I didn't like, know it was going to be one hundred fifty dollars. But I'm saying, if you would have researched, you could have called the restaurant ahead of time. I mean, I had one hundred fifty-four like dollars in my bank account. I feel like I had enough money to take you anywhere to go eat. You know and what listen. I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. that you know what? And, and I want to say because the background that I grew up. Like with, and so let me kind of give some context to this because I oftentimes take hits in social media as like being this gold digging woman. So let's kind of rewind this. She I grew is up with a little it. bit. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up within a very like both my parents blue collar workers, right? I saw my daddy and my mom go both of them went to work. We didn't like we went to church all day on Sundays. And for us, if we we always ate at home, if we went out to eat, it was like to Ryan's buffet or like even if we stopped and got a, a McDonald's, like something from McDonald's, it was literally cheeseburger. And that was it. It wasn't no fries. It wasn't no drink. So I get what it means to like I, looking back now, I understand more than I did at the time as a kid. When we came into this dating space, first of all, when I met you, you were, you put on the facade of, yeah, you was that guy, right? I was, I was, you, I, listen, you I was, was getting it, I was getting it, <laughs> but the time you came along, we started really getting serious, it, we got into some, some gray area, it was getting kind of bad during then. <laughs> oh, no. It was, you, I mean, like she came along guy. and this tornado came, I should have known me and they were like, it came with her. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. So you, 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 you know, you marketed yourself as being that guy. So I just held you. I didn't want to. Okay. If so on my end, if you ask me, well, where do you want to go out to eat at? And I say some mediocre like space or restaurant. I'm good. Then it looks bad on my part. Like, oh, she, she, you know, like this low level female, like look at her standards. So I, pro- I think at that time I would have said a restaurant that would have what I felt been up to your standard or would have made me look as if I belonged in your space. And I think that within itself. At that time. Like seventy percent of our dates were at Applebee's. That was telling you right. No, no it wasn't. We was hanging at Applebee's no, every other night. No, it wasn't. Every I, other night, I, I thirty-five dollars. We both was in there. 
Listen. Watching Kobe and the Lakers. We wasn't. Well, I tell you what, we got. We remember two totally different dates. <laughs> I, I don't remember Applebee. I remember our first date being at McCormick and Smith. Man, that was like, like be, that no, was before this matter. thing got real. <laughs> that was before the thing got serious. That was when I, I the, then listen. we, we then it was a different space in life. I, think, I was really I, I I, at the, that point in time. Life was a little bit different. I think the moral <laughs> to the whole story for me is that I do think that women should show up. Okay, so a couple things to what the because I want to be intentional about addressing like what he said he asked so what is a provider like today what is a provider I feel I agree with what he's saying as far as like the relationship being a partnership in that you should have a conversation as you're going into the relationship and kind of I even think that that's first date conversation I think that it's okay to ask those questions so kind of tell me what is your expectation and What's your expectation of, you know, a woman that you see yourself being with? It doesn't have to be of me because you don't know me. But what is your expect? What are you looking for in a woman? Some of them traditional questions. Hold on. I think that in doing that, like having those questions instead of, and even with men, y'all have the same responsibility you we do. Y'all need to ask us questions too to make sure that y'all are on the same page. Because here's the thing. If you're not asking me the question, don't fault me for basically going along with like with the temperament of what you're setting. The the let me say the stage that you're setting. Cause see, the first day, y'all looking at how fine we are, y'all looking at how, you know, like we got ourselves together. Sir, that ain't free. I'm paying for it right now. And honestly, <laughs> you like it so much. At some point in time, this might become your responsibility. So but you, but, but, I think you got a responsibility. Can, can. Look how expensive she looked. She showed up like that. Either she paying for it or somebody else paying for it. And if you that guy that's on that date right now, guess what you signing yourself up for? It's possible that you gonna be the next person paying for it. But when I met you, you 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 was low like you 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 know what I mean. And, and first you, all, I don't even want to say I, it I on very, like you. You're very homely. <laughs> you were very 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 homely looking. I was not homely looking and I, I honestly okay, it's one of the things before you go there before you go there before you go there it was one no I didn't believe in spending a ton of money on like clothes I didn't believe in being like we just came from two totally different backgrounds I mean what happened like no but <laughs> I didn't believe <laughs> I didn't believe what, what in happened? those things. What happened along the way? Um, what happened along the way? I start. I, I mean, you, but at the same time, I carry my own though. Like, so I can like afford to, I don't shop like, I don't wear like Gucci shirts or, or like, you know, Louis Vuitton, like clothing wear. I don't wear those like things because that's not what I believe in. And I don't knock the people that do. But at the same time, like, if I see something nice because I'm in a space, a financial space, I have to appear a certain way, look a certain way. Yeah, I mean, I can't shop how I used to shop when we first dated. Hey, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Can I ask the people in the back a question, too? Was she going to date with the man? And he says, I'm looking, for, so I'm looking to be a stay-at-home dad. I'm looking for a woman to take care of me. What like, if I go, go ahead? When, so that's what we're saying is acceptable. No, because at that point, that's going to be our first and last date. And that's one of the moments where I say but, I have but, my debit but, card ready. I'm out. <laughs> but, 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 but what he's saying essentially is, is that he's okay. Like, this is the role. I'm going to be a stay-at-home parent, and she's going to get the bread. I don't think he said that. I felt yeah, that. I, I, I felt because because no because I'm not saying that that's it's his exact words, but like if we allow, I, I'm saying this because I got two sons, right, and I got three daughters, and it goes both ways. If we allow that belief to be like once you get into it, you, is you're into it, but you can't walk into it with that being the belief because if we do, we're worried, I, I, like I don't want my daughters raising those kind, of, dating those kind of men, and I don't want my sons being those kind of men either. You know what I mean? Because that's not what I'm teaching my sons. I, 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 Jordan, if we brought him in here, I he tell you, my dad said if I can't afford to take her there, then we can't go there. That's why he don't go on no date because he can't afford to take him nowhere. He got no job. You know what I mean? I mean, reality is, and 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 I and and and. Once you get down the line, yeah, but you can't walk in. You got to walk in there like, I just believe that my daughter, I don't want my, if my daughter come home and she's like, yeah, I like that guy. I, and she's but like. But he broke. 
Yeah, I mean, not, no, but, 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 but no, 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 no. <laughs> if he's broke today at at twenty two, he's broke today at eighteen or seventeen. That's different. Like that. Like like. But, but what's like what's his what's the plan? But even if he's broke at twenty two, don't take her on no date if you can't pay for it. If you gonna if, if you gonna take on a date, you gotta pay for it, right? She broke too, you know what I mean. So if y'all both broke, then then I mean, in you in the space that you gotta you you have to figure out how we're gonna date and go forward. Then don't go on no date. No 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 no. Then then we have to be creative in what we do as far as experiences. One of the best experiences I have with my wife is when we when I did not have a lot of money, we went and go rent some bikes. This is well a long time ago, and we rode the bikes through the city. Right, that was the best day we ever had. Right. It didn't cost me. It cost me fifty bucks, right? But you're taking away what he's saying. No, yeah. he, but he's saying, you're, and you're saying, you don't want your son to be that way. I get it. But what you what he was saying is, the women are expecting, not just. And we're getting caught up on just the date part. They <coughs> said they want their nails done. They want everything paid. For. But that's where, to I, me, men fall short. Men ask questions if she shows up and she has a designer handbag she has her hair done she has her nails done ask questions because here's the reality somebody's paying for it and you want you should want to know how she's paying for it if she is the one paying for it and if somebody else is paying for it you should want to know why they're continuing to pay for it and even if it's her parents paying for it to me that is a red flag for men because if it's her parents or if it's somebody else's responsibility she has no real like that's it's not her responsibility so she I mean, she's just getting it done, and so what I, she's I, looking I, for I is disagree. her next sponsor. I disagree with that because my daughter, she, she, she gonna everything that I feel like he should do. I feel like they should have done already. So when he comes along, it's like this is what you, this is what you gonna be expect. My dad doing this now. This is what the expectation is gonna be. You know what I, I mean? I, I agree, but you have they have you have to ask questions because I think that for men, it's a you get stuck at the point of oh she look good, she look bad, she but y'all not asking questions. Y'all just looking with y'all's eyes and y'all not asking questions. Nah, and because nah. you're not asking questions, then you get upset when the expectation of oh she want me to get her nails done, she want me to get her hair done. Well. Okay, let's be real here. Okay, let's talk about this just for a second. This is real talk. All right, y'all ready? We know when we see a girl if we can afford her or not. We do. No, am I lying? We know when we see a girl. It's facts, ain't it? We know if we see a girl if we can afford her or not. So basically, right? if she's in your league or out of your league. No, 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 no. There's a difference. What you're saying, we already know that. We look at that, right? And we you know so we. Go ahead. Then why do y'all pursue? I, I like no 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 time out time out time out let's talk about this then why pursue it sometimes a woman opens the door for a man to let in that might not be what she was used to right she just like y'all we know how much y'all cost y'all know how much y'all know what we y- y'all looking at us like he can afford that or not everybody knows this ain't no like li- Okay, I we've been married a long time, but I was single for a while before I got married, right? And and reality was is that I knew what I could afford and what I could not afford. And there was some girls that I just was like I would go after. And there was some girls that I could probably afford, but I was like, if shit got bad, then that, she gonna leave. <laughs> but it goes back to you know what you can afford, right? We all, I mean, it's just really what it is, right? And so when you saying why do we like? We, I don't, I think that. I think that you, what you just did, you just answered my question. Y'all don't ask questions. No, we know. We can take it. We can take it. It's pride. It's pride. Okay. When you pull up on a girl, you can really tell how much everything she calls had on. We look at all that, right? Can you? Well, you can. We just had a conversation earlier in talking about how you can, I can take an outfit from Target. Nah, Put I'm not looking wood. at that. I mean, I'm looking so at her I can shoes, look, at her I purse, kinda... I'm looking at her hair, her nails. I'm looking at the whole dang thing. And if there's, if there's nothing missing in the purse's two thousand dollar purse, I'm looking at that and be like, that's somebody's problem. Or I mean, because but 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 there's two ways, right? Either it's somebody's problem or she's getting it herself, right? If she's getting it herself, today's problem with in society, what I've seen, is that she's getting it herself. There's two ways. 
she not she thinks that the dude's supposed to be rich when she come along and the sad part about it is most of the dudes are rich they married <laughs> i mean we we figured it out pretty young right and the other part to that is is that is that she becomes unapproachable. I, I what i'm seeing i'm not i'm not speaking for all people because she becomes unapproachable right and so what she's asking for, she the kind of guy that she wants is 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 not gonna approach her because she's unapproachable just a little bit, right? But the ones that really would do her well, they looking at her like, Shh, I can't afford that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess, and, and and vice versa though. It's communication. I think that because here's the thing. If you look at me and you assume one, I hear that all the time. And I don't just hear that like at men looking at women. I hear that women looking at women, um, like even men looking at men, I'm not talking about relationship wise, but I'm talking about in general, like communication, right? I, I hear all the time, like after I have a conversation with another woman, oh my gosh, I thought you were this way. I didn't know that you were... Well, you never came over and like talked to me or you never came to ask me questions. And, and to the unapproachable part, it depends if I'm in a setting that I'm like new to or I'm not comfortable with, I'm not at home or I'm not somewhere familiar, then I'm probably going to look a little bit defensive. So you can't even say the unapproachable part. So it, and when you're talking about relationships, like communication from the very get go, like because honestly, if. I can be in the grocery store. I was in the grocery store and I had a man who I, I can't judge him off of what he like looked like then, but he looked like he, he might have just done a shift that he looked like he was a working man, right? But he told he complimented me and I told I said thank you. And I kept walking on about my I bet not ever get your tongue. <laughs> Sir, your problem is if you think that I'm Alan, I don't get compliments. No, but I said, I said, thank you. But, and, and actually, and I think that I was actually on a store run. It was a, that late night store run right before the event that I was with Stasia, uh, our oldest daughter, and with, yeah. So when we were, like, out, I didn't, it was late, so I didn't even have my ring on. But he complimented me, and I said, thank you. Like my leave, thing leave, is, leave my house again. I have your <laughs> ring on. Nah. <laughs> but uh, my point being is, at the time, if you looked at me and you looked at him, I looked out of his league. But he still like took the step, took the leap of faith to say to give me a compliment. And now, he asked you for your number. No, but I'm saying if I well, because probably because of how I responded, it was just like I know how to take a compliment, but keep pushing your basket that way, and I'm gonna keep pushing my basket this way. But right, what I'm that, saying is like communication, but, but, like but you gotta be. It's got. The, let's talk about the commu- real quickly the communication part. Do you know? what it takes for a man to walk up to a woman in public and ask her for her name and phone number. And do I know pra- what it no, takes? No, no, I'm just saying like a voice, know, like courage, like, it take the courage, part, confidence, right? the courage, the confidence and all. And that if you part. don't have those things, but, then but, but, but no, but I'm saying, let me, let, me, let me finish. Let me finish. Mm-hmm. And so, and when I was growing up when, in our generation, it wasn't, we had to walk up to him and we had to ask because if we didn't ask, we probably never saw him again. Like, like it was all, it was, no it, it was so many media. variables. Like we had to show up and we had to ask, even if it was, do you know how embarrassing it was to write a letter and ask a girl for her phone number Sorry, and head to him in, 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 in the hallways? I mean, like, no, nah, we I was in middle, that was middle school that though. Out. But, but, but you take it on, on like, right? <laughs> Think about today, right? You see a girl, you like. In school, and you going you don't even say nothing to her. You in her inbox like, how, how, how you doing? Can I have your number? Like that is like, like so. We start talking about communication. Like they can't communicate. But you can't communicate if 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 you if if you don't have the courage to walk up to somebody and say, and, and have a conversation, right? How where, where do you think the communication is gonna come from on the back end? That's not right? an excuse. I like, mean, that's it not is. An excuse. Ain't ain't there is so no communication, but that's. So I read an article not too long ago, and it was talking about the divorce rates, especially amongst like the black community. It was talking about divorce rates being very, very high. And to me, like Pause. when you, that's the next show. Okay, but yeah, but I'm saying I'm just referencing it. So okay. and so I read this article, and it was talking about the divorce rate. And one of the things, the issue is is communication, and to your point. 
if you don't know how to communicate with me early on, and that is never something that we work on, uh, because we either mask it or we hide it, or it's just something we never work on, then it's almost like you ever tripped before. And like, instead of trying to stop yourself, catch your balance, you keep trying to like, you just keep going forward and you end up falling dead on your face. It's the same thing with communication. If it's not addressed early on, or if it's the, the seeds of like healthy seeds aren't planted early on, then you're gonna run into those problems. What the young man even said on the clip where I do agree with, he talked about, if this is a partnership, relationships are partnerships. And I've like, yes, taken a few, like I've gotten beat up for this even before. I'm sorry, I don't believe that it, a man walks in front of and a woman walks behind. I believe that husband and wife walk side by side. Now you can choose which side I'm on, but I'm your partner. And so in being your partner, now our roles and responsibilities are different. That's not to say that what you like, but that's communication. We talk about those things. So for him to say, okay, this is a partnership and we should talk about who handles what, I actually do agree with that part. And if in their relationship, because I think the other part based off of the commentator, what she said, was essentially the the young lady, his significant other, his partner, has a bigger following. So it's easy for him to say that, you know, uh, men shouldn't have to pay for all these things because in other words, he's the kept man. Then that's a completely different conversation. But I think that he had some, I think he had a strong foundation for what he was trying to say. I think that his situation probably overshadowed um, or had or played a part in how people received what he was saying. But I do believe that women should be able to have their own, hold their own. I do believe that you should communicate in a relationship about what the expectations are financially as well as other things in the relationship. And I do believe that relationships are partnerships. We are both contributing. So All right, that's what so I'm, 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 you know, those male sexes podcast where they may on this and man that I'm about mm -hmm. to do that for just a second right um I do believe a woman should have her own I do I agree to that um I believe when the husband and wife come together um that the man is the head of the household and the wife is the the neck and the in the, the spine I 100% agree I but here's where we have but does the body work without like the it doesn't thing? but but follow me just for a second Biblically, the man's supposed to cast a vision, and, and, and that's where the family goes. And if we, if we don't teach these men what the Lord said, mm -hmm. then we're casting households that don't operate biblically. And so we can't just say this is 2024, and now we change what God said, how it should work. <laughs> <laughs> I, can I pause you? Follow, no, no, let me finish. Let me finish. I, let me, I just want to say this, right? Because, mm -hmm. and and it, the unfortunate part about it is this: even if that's okay in some situations, mm -hmm. we can't teach that because it's not to our to to the. We can't teach that to these to the men. I agree with what this young man said. I do. I mean, if like like like. <laughs> Inflation is real, right? I mean, everybody's in, like, we're in different times today, right? Um, and, I, and I agree with some of the things that he said. Mm -hmm. But that can't be something that we preach. We can't preach that. What is the part that we can't preach, I guess, is what We, we can't like. preach that. It's okay to have a conversation about who pays what? No, that's okay. But, but, we, but, but we have, okay, all right. You're right. We, you're right. Maybe we just had the wrong situation of the person giving the information because in his situation is she makes the most money and, and she takes care of the situation. She takes care of their relationship. Right. And, and that's okay in situation to situation. But that's their understanding. Yeah. But I don't need him giving that. He can't give that as an understanding because then that feels like that's what we're selling to today's kids. Like, 
it, it is. is it, because that is true. He might cover her in a way that, like, see, everybody is focused, like, fixated on the money part, but he might cover her in a way that, honestly, is priceless. Because here's the thing. You got these men out here that they are the providers. They are providers. They are paying for everything. <laughs> but they leave they women so compromised in certain situations. And honestly, it might sound bad, but I see why some women do lean towards the direction of wanting men who, like, okay, he does make less, but he's supportive of her. He's, like, pushing her. He's, like, so I don't necessarily think it's just okay. all about but finances. Then, but then, but then well, so when we say it like that, then we have to say it all the way around like this. And the women have to, so, because you have to pick then. What? Do you want the one that is going to be well rounded, or do you want the one that's going to provide the best lifestyle for you and the family? Because the one that's going to provide you the best lifestyle, the other things that they're missing, man, what? this stuff there, there's no there's no there's no healthy balance to that. There's you, no healthy balance to. You are to, at a place where you're coming across what appears to be frozen water, but just know. That ice on top of that water is so thin because what I would hope is that I have somebody sitting in front of me and I would want to tell our listeners, I would want to, with confidence and truth, tell our listeners that it is possible for a man to provide as well as cover his wife. No, it is. I'm not picking. Well, well, okay, okay, okay. Let Let me say this. It's okay if you need to go back the other way. No, I don't. Mm-hmm. There's a sacrifice in today's society because things cost so much money. Mm-hmm. And social media has allowed us to live in a place where women believe that their hair and nails should be done, their eyelash should be done. Um, and their clothes should be brand. I don't even know how they can wear the same clothes twice if they're taking pictures every time they put the clothes on, right? Which is crazy. I mean, it is. But this is the this is the the environment that we have that the world has created. This is what we live in, and what you're saying, and what I'm saying. It's not that far away from each other. But what I am saying is this. Because of what is laid out and because of how the lines have been drawn, we're supposed to tell everybody the rules have changed. And I don't think the rules have changed because what you're saying you're willing to accept, you wouldn't accept it that for me if when I first came along because there was a standard that was set by your dad. There was a standard that your dad set for your brothers. There was a standard that your grandfather set for your dad before then. There's a standard that, 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 that. But what, what, I guess where I, where I like, where I want to ask is what standard, because it's a partnership. I, I no, did. we are a partnership now. We're no, talking. I think he, that, but he mentioned it being a partnership, and so you're saying that he's projecting or what he's preaching. We don't want, in other words, our sons to practice what he's preaching. And I'm what I guess for me, I don't necessarily see where he's the only people that he offended are women who can't afford to do it on their own, and so they expect. For a man to do it for them. Them the ones that's online all day long eating they everybody up anyway. They also just assumed he was broke because he said that. Exactly. <laughs> and, or, or because she has a bigger following and or because like she's the, the face of whatever they have going on. I don't I don't agree with that. And and I think that all he was saying was it's a partnership and you have to like provider does not fall in the traditional boat of because we've been through our times there were times like even as you were transitioning like industries there was times that I still was showing up and I was 
temporarily the breadwinner of the family. I didn't take a step back and say, well, wait, hold on. This ain't tradition. So I'm not going to work if you're not going to work. No, it was we held each other down. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would not. I not said going while to you work. were transitioned. You said, streets. but you said not going to work. I, I went to work every day. But <laughs> no, <I'm> just like, <laughs> <laughs> my point being is that it's a you being able we, to pivot. We, were, we were married and i and i think that we i so look I, okay I, I i do want to say this once you're married it becomes something different once you're okay once you're on the way to be married i think it becomes something different i think when you're dating i mean I, miss but it starts when you get it does it it okay but yeah you're going to still be paying she's going to expect that and oh. then there's also, it's easy to grow resentment because now I pay for everything. I expect you to do certain things. I, I expect certain things because I'm paying for everything. Now, I'm kind of in the wrong for expecting that, but now I'm expecting it because I'm paying for everything. And I, now I have this resentment growing. And then she is expecting for me to pay for everything. And now it's just back and forth. It's a unbound if it's like that. The only people I feel like who can really successfully pull this off are like athletes and people with, who have a whole bunch of money to where it's like, okay, sure, you just have this throwaway money to where you can pay for everything. But are we talking about relationships or are we talking about dating? Because if we're in a relationship that's different, if we're dating that's totally different. But I he's just, saying that you plant you how you start off. But he's saying you're setting the tone because dating. When you think about dating, what is dating? Dating is you are setting the tone for like the journey that you're getting ready to embark upon. Now, again, it, I just don't want no. I, I don't know. I mean, I okay. If I'm in a relationship and we pull up and she says she's paying half the time, I'm good with that. But right? how do you get to a relationship? You got to date. Then but if I'm dating, then get to marriage. But if I date, now I don't know how. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if you I can. Pay uh, for it. If you want to pay for everything, that's, that's, there's no one paying that's wrong if you're a man and you want to do it. Yeah. I just don't need you to expect it. Yeah. And I don't want to be with a woman who's expecting it. But okay, how do you ask her? Who's asking who out on the date then? If we're dating and I'm asking you on a date, then I'm supposed to pay for it. If you call, if she calls me and she's like, hey, let's go to Top Golf tonight. I'm just probably gonna expect for her to pay for it because she you, called me and asked you me. You would call. expect for her to pay. I for mean, it? I don't know today. I'm, I'm trying to think in 2024 time, but I probably wouldn't then. But like, like I'm sure. I mean, it, I, it, like it, I ain't it, been. Right. I've been, been married. I've been married a long time here, y'all. I mean, I'm, when I, before I got married, it wasn't on Facebook and Instagram. It wasn't none of that, <laughs> right? It was like so. When I, it wasn't. I don't even know if text messages existed. Did they exist back then. But no, I'm just playing. But I, I think in dating, I'm gonna say this. You have traditional mindset. You would have always, even if I called you, said, hey, let's go here. Like I would pay I, for it. Yeah, you would have paid for it. And that was my expectation that you was gonna pay for it. But when we got but, but when we start when we start like, getting ready, when, when we got we got in a real relationship, it. it changed though. I mean, I think I still pay for it, but when we got married, it changed. I mean, I think that I don't know. I, I want a man okay, I got I have three daughters again. And I want a man that's gonna be able to say I'm going to take care of my daughter and I'm going to take care of your daughter. And if we get married, shit get hard. My daughter's going to be strong enough to know how to take care of herself or take care of the family. Because there's been times in this relationship with Stacey has stepped up and she had to be the, the strong one. Right. But before we got married, that's not what she saw. She saw me taking care of everything else. And because I, because if there's one thing that you know will never happen in this situation, what's that? I'm going to let what? We not. I mean, we're not going to fail. And so, because, and, and, and I think that there's some things that come behind that, and it may be, I might be wrong, right? I'm not saying I'm 100% right, right? But I just believe that if you show up as a man and you say, all right, I got this, and when we get married, if shit happens, shit happens, right? But if I show up and I say, I got this, all right, I just want you to know, I just want her to have my back, right? But I'm still supposed to be the one that got this. Well. I think we can agree to disagree. <laughs> this one. Yeah, um, so if you feel differently or if you have your own opinion, uh, you feel that, yeah, you you see a whole different perspective, please don't hesitate to leave your comments in the comment section. But and again. I, I do want to throw this in there. Mm -hmm. I think that if, if dating has become so crazy, right? In so many ways and expectations on it. Like, 
when you sit down with somebody, if you really want to have this conversation, let's have a conversation about what's your budget look like. Like, are you? Do you have a like? Like, what's, let's let's talk about this, right? Um, if we if we look at like going down like date ten, and we really serious about each other, what's your credit look like? I need to know what your credit looks like, right? And then, what are you saving for for the future? Like, not like what do you want to be? Like, what are you saving for? Mm-hmm. Because if you ask those questions, right, you, y'all can kind of understand what kind of category you in, right? Even if you lie about the credit a little bit, right. <laughs> But if you start having these conversations, man, I think everybody's open enough to have the conversations. And and here's the craziest part about it, right? If you ask those three simple conversations, you really understand a lot about where you're at with the person. You and you can respect that person in a whole different situation. Y'all can move in a different situation. Like, what do you? What, what's the budget? What's the, what we budget? What's the budget? Right? Because if you got an Applebee's budget and she hears that and she's like, at least she's being honest with me, she might take you differently because she likes you. You know what I mean? And if you ask her, you know, down the road, if y'all really about to get married, like, what's your credit look like? Like. My credit's trash. What's yours are like? And she's going to be like, shit, my trash too. <laughs> all right, so now we figure out what we're working towards, right? And if we get down the road, you're like, all right, what you saving for? Shit, I'm saving for a house. And if he's saving for a, a Mercedes-Benz living apartment, then y'all understand the difference in what you're looking at. You know what I mean? I think that what you talked about is communication, but I think that we have to be clear about what we're communicating and what we're trying I to think, get out of it. And, and I agree. And I think that the more you continue to date, the questions change. Yeah. But on the first date, it can't be you just telling me how good I look. And in the back of your mind, you might have a whole different agenda. Well, guess what? You're Because you're spending that time just fluffing me up and you're not spending any time really asking me any like questions like that have substance to figure out where my head is at. Don't be mad when it doesn't play out in your favor or when you end up getting played. I think that communication from the get-go if I could go back and talk to our younger selves and even in preaching it to like our our nieces our, our our kids like whoever I'm just always fixated on make sure that you plant healthy seeds of communication don't be afraid to ask questions and I, because the reality of it is, is at least at the end of the day, you can say that you ask. At least you can have a, if it's not what you want, you get to make an informed decision. I personally like information so that I can make intelligent, informed decisions. Not based off my emotion, not based off of just the information. I want to base it off of the information that I get. So communication, um, if like, don't be afraid to communicate. Don't be afraid to ask. So when we talk about finances, we talk about like we understand that inflation is only going to get worse. What is inflation? Inflation is the cost of goods. It's when things get more expensive to put it in layman's terms for women. It used to be that we could go get a washing and and dry for thirty five dollars. Now it's every bit of one hundred and sixty dollars inflation. Um, I think that financial advice that I would give is, number one, have an understanding of your own budget. You can go to Google and print off a budgeting sheet. Excel actually um, has a very simple budgeting uh, spreadsheet. And understand where your money is. And because I am a firm believer that I don't believe in being a hypocrite. In other words, Don't show up to the table expecting this from, and I'm talking to the women, don't show up to the table expecting this from a young man and you've done the math on your own budget and you can't even afford to live off of your expectations. So I am a firm believer of understanding a budget. What is your money coming in? What is your money going out? And make sure that you are saving. That's a financial tip that I would offer. With that being said, uh-huh. this was a great episode. Yeah, I think it's an important you know. episode. Much right. needed. Until next time. Until next time, be sure to make sure, if you haven't already, like, hit the like and subscribe button, and we'll see you again soon. Take care.